So, Marvel's Phase 4. It's been interesting, to say the least. We've gotten fantastic projects like Shang-Chi and No Way Home, and we've also gotten Hawkeye. Let's go, bro. Let's go, bro! <sighs> They've done a lot creatively, taking bigger swings and exploring different characters. From all of this, some serious story issues have begun to emerge. My friend actually has a really good video breaking down these problems. I'll leave a link to it in the description. I'd recommend checking it out. In this video, though, I want to focus on Marvel's plan for Phase 4. Looking at the upcoming movies and TV shows, what are they hoping to accomplish by telling these specific stories? In this video, I'm going to break down what I think the goals are for Phase 4, and discuss how well they've been meeting them. Let's dive in. First of all, I believe Marvel is trying to capture a larger audience by creating projects that appeal to specific niches. Optimistically, you could say they're taking artistic risks by experimenting in new genres, but that's not the primary goal. At their core, Marvel is focused on diversifying their product to attract new customers. That sounds cynical, however, you gotta remember, these are movies designed to make money. To get an idea of what I'm talking about, let's look at the Infinity Saga. In those first three phases, there was little variation from Marvel's homogenous style. Most of the movies fit into a familiar world that operates with a specific tone and style. There are subtle differences between the films, but they're undoubtedly Marvel. The quips, the visual language, the characters, they're all very similar. Amongst those 23 films, I would only categorize Doctor Strange, Ragnarok, Black Panther, and the two Guardians movies as being in a different genre in any substantial way. Yeah, I know there are arguments like The Winter Soldier being a political thriller and all that, but I believe only these five truly stand out in some way. Not to say the others aren't good, just that these are the only ones that experiment in a specific genre in a notable way. You can argue for or against my list, maybe add a couple more, but no matter which way you look at it, it's a very small portion of the Infinity Saga. Now, let's look at Phase 4 so far. WandaVision Loki Eternals Moon Knight Doctor Strange and to some degree, Shang-Chi and No Way Home. These are all attempts to play with a different genre, and as such, appeal to a specific audience. How successfully they do that is up for debate, but that is clearly what they are trying to do. That leaves Black Widow, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Hawkeye as the quote-unquote normal ones. Even if you want to put Shang-Chi and No Way Home into the normal category, that's still a vastly different ratio than the first three phases. Comparing these numbers, it becomes clear that Marvel is now trying to experiment, flex their muscles a bit in an attempt to capture a new audience. Even if they can't convince new viewers to stick with them for the long haul, they'll at least earn a bit of money when fans of a specific genre decide to watch Marvel's take on it. Beyond just the genre plays, Marvel seems to have set their sights on loftier goals. For lack of a better term, they're trying to create classics. They're doing this by tying some of their projects to holidays. Two examples of this are Hawkeye and the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Both of them focus around Christmas time. I know I categorized Hawkeye as a normal one, because I don't think it did its genre very well, but making it Christmas-themed was clearly Marvel's intention. Regardless, their goal here is to create projects that can be returned to every Christmas, like It's a Wonderful Life, or The Grinch. It's a level of prestige that's valuable to achieve, as well as ensuring that they always have a time of year where specific projects will see a boost in numbers. And despite how badly Hawkeye sucked, I think there's a good chance that the Guardian special turns into one of those classic holiday films for many people. And I wouldn't be surprised if Marvel tries to create content for other holidays, for example, making House of Harkness a Halloween series. The question becomes, is this working? Are these attempts to play in different genres paying off? Well, sort of. Coming off the Infinity Saga, I imagine Marvel must have faced a dilemma. The so-called Marvel formula, which garnered the massive success for over 10 years, was getting tiresome. People were becoming more and more aware of the tropes and trends of Marvel films, and it just wasn't enough anymore. So, they had two options, plow forward with the formula in an attempt to maintain their earlier success, or truly take risks by allowing filmmakers to create unique pieces of art unsupervised. Instead, the projects we've seen show they've elected for a crappy compromise, allowing creatives to dabble in the genre of their choosing, but still restraining them within the confines of the Marvel machine. They can have the symbolism or tropes of the genre, but it still has to end in a third-act CGI punch fest. The results are movies that are good when they should have been great, or complete messes that have buckled under the weight of trying to conform to Marvel's standards. 
Ironically, it seems the very thing that gave Marvel its strength in the first place has now become a weight holding it back, its interconnectivity. As they try to experiment with different genres, they risk making the whole thing feel too disconnected, which I believe they are already bordering on. The harder they commit to those genres, the worse the problem gets. So, they can't really utilize any of them to their full potential. There's always exceptions like Moon Knight, where the character is inherently disconnected from the larger universe, so they can take bigger swings. However, in general, they're stuck in the middle, unable to keep it fully connected, unable to make too many true genre films. Take a look at DC. They're not held back by interconnectivity, and can take gambles on filmmakers with a specific vision, and those risks have the potential to pay off big time. When movies like Matt Reeves' The Batman come out, superhero fans go crazy. It dominates the cultural conversation for much longer because of its quality. I never really get excited for DC movies the same way I do Marvel films, because they pump out a lot of garbage, but I can't deny, their best films beat the majority, if not all, of the MCU films in terms of quality. The fact is, Marvel just can't compete with films like The Batman using their studio-grown pieces of content. And for the genre work the MCU has done, it's kind of a pro-con situation. Experimenting in a new genre will attract new viewers and keep the franchise fresh, but will inevitably cause some existing fans to say that Marvel's taken it too far or gone in the wrong direction. You risk isolating more casual fans by introducing wackier concepts. This brings me to what I believe is the other goal of Phase 4, attempting to shape the MCU into a world as large and fleshed out as the comics. The main way they're achieving this is by creating side stories that may not appeal to all existing fans, yet have the potential to draw new viewers. Not everything is for everyone, but there's something for anyone. It's related to genre, but not the exact same thing. These sorts of smaller scale stories, usually in the Disney Plus shows, aren't concerned with the main plotline of Phase 4, but are geared towards different audiences and focus on spending more time with the characters. Miss Marvel, for example, looks to be more geared towards teenagers. From the trailers, I wouldn't say that it delves into a genre as deeply as WandaVision or Loki, but it's appealing to audiences in a different way, by giving younger viewers a character they can relate to. Like with their genre projects, it's all about attracting as many customers as possible. However, there's two issues with trying to replicate the comics universe. There's not enough projects, and it goes against the model the MCU has been selling its audience for years. Let me break that down further. You may think I'm insane or greedy, saying there's not enough projects. After all, look at everything coming out this year alone. Moon Knight, Doctor Strange, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, Black Panther, and Thor. It's an impressive lineup, but the issue is it's not nearly the quantity of stories the comics have. None of the TV shows run concurrently. So, if you don't like Moon Knight or Miss Marvel, there's not another show you can turn to in the meantime. Unlike the comics, where a wealth of new material is always being produced, allowing readers to pick and choose the stories they follow. With Disney+, Plus, you either watch the one Marvel show being aired, or no Marvel content. And that's an issue for Marvel. This leads me to my second point. The MCU model isn't designed to replicate the comics universe. Marvel has built its brand around the idea that every movie in its franchise was essential. Interconnectivity and movies building on each other was the name of the game. Sure, there was always the occasional movie like Ant-Man that didn't add much, but for the most part, each movie felt like it contributed to the overall story. This model conflicts with the new strategy they're trying, creating more unique stories that don't contribute as much to the larger story. Audiences are still in the mindset of the earlier phases. As such, they have an expectation that all the properties will be necessary viewing and all be critical in understanding the story of Phase 4. Whether this is fair or not, it's the truth of the matter. I genuinely believe Marvel intends for some of these projects to only appeal to certain audiences and just be a side story. The issue is, when there's usually only one TV show or movie coming out at a time, that project has to be treated as a big deal. None of them can be presented as just a side story or even be swept under the rug if it turns out to be really bad. Even if they won't contribute to the overall story in a significant way, Marvel has to present them in a similar way to projects that will. Just look at the marketing surrounding each property. Marvel markets each new TV show or movie more or less equally. There may not be the same amount of money put into traditional media marketing like TV commercials for each project, it's hard to know the exact numbers, but when it comes to modern media platforms, 
they're pushing all of their projects fairly equally. Go back through the official Instagram page for Marvel Studios, and you'll see a similar number of posts for Hawkeye, Moon Knight, and Loki. Despite their wildly varying levels of importance to the overarching story of Phase 4, they're each presented on the same playing field. This is a strategy Marvel will no doubt continue to employ. As a result, all the marketing creates the false expectation in the viewer's mind that each new project will be of equal importance, that each one will contribute and connect to the overall story, and that they will be of equal quality. But the truth is, not all Marvel properties are created equally when it comes to how much they matter to the overarching narrative. Of course, equal marketing doesn't guarantee that people will like or even watch every project. Fans skip certain movies or shows all the time. I personally have zero interest in House of Harkness. But the marketing still creates the sense of a must-see event, even if that's not what it is. There should be nothing wrong with small-scale adventures that only appeal to some people. There should be nothing wrong with telling an inconsequential, fun side story. Not everything should have to be an Avengers-level threat. But the issue is, the MCU has created an environment that won't allow that. The expectations from fans is that each property informs the bigger picture. If Marvel makes a TV show that tells a smaller scale story, it will reach people who are not the target audience. As a result, for six weeks, the conversation about Marvel will be dominated by how inconsequential this show is, or how bad it is. Not because the quality is necessarily worse, but simply because it's not geared towards those fans. If the MCU wants to tell side stories, they shouldn't have to live up to the same standards as something like No Way Home. I'm not saying those shows should be immune from criticism, just that they should have a chance to reach the audience they were intended for. But by presenting them in the same light as every other Phase 4 project, it creates unnecessary expectations around the show. While Marvel may wish their audience understands that not every show or movie will be for everyone, and some fans have started to come around on this, I think this will be a bigger issue than they realize. If a side story gets a bad reception because it was presented as crucial to the story when it really wasn't, and it strayed beyond its intended audience, it dilutes the image of the brand as a whole. To sum up, Phase 4 has attempted to play in different genres and target various audiences by diversifying the types of stories they're telling. It's also tried to expand the universe to resemble the comics universe more closely. However, they've been hindered by having to conform to the interconnected universe and not being able to produce enough content to justify certain fun side stories. With the shows only being released one at a time, it forces each one to carry the weight of the franchise for the duration of its run. If one of them turns out to be below fan standards, or not what was expected, they risk creating a negative impression of Marvel during that time. So, back to the main question of the video, will Phase 4 succeed? Will this foray into new territory pay off for Marvel? Well, financially, it certainly will. Black Widow and Shang-Chi each made around $400 million during the pandemic, and No Way Home made nearly $2 billion. I can point out the flaws or issues Marvel may be facing in terms of making genre films, but I can't deny the numbers. They're doing amazing. Each MCU film dominates at the box office. Genre films are not, connected or not, the MCU still has massive pull, and there's little doubt that it will continue to succeed. But when it comes to the actual merits of the stories they're telling, that's harder to say. I'll admit, the video was somewhat hyperbolic. Telling a small-scale genre story doesn't automatically mean that the majority of fans will dislike it. It's entirely possible to tell a good story that many people enjoy, even if they aren't the target audience. Marvel is still Marvel. They know how to write good stories. However, I do believe these are legitimate problems. If genre films become the new norm for the MCU, I think it will be too much for more casual viewers. The more wild concepts they introduce, the more the audience has to suspend their disbelief. Eventually, it'll be too much for some. Combined with the fact that they are introducing so many new characters that people aren't attached to, and I wouldn't be surprised if the numbers start to fall. Additionally, having all these side stories starts to lengthen the phase. It makes it more difficult to keep track of the narrative threads they're trying to build, because the shows and movies keep taking detours. Do you remember the tease of the Dark Avengers from Falcon and Winter Soldier? Or the fact that timelines split into an infinite branches in Loki? That was a year ago, and we've yet to see any follow-up. Having a threat like Thanos kept people engaged and wanting to see what would happen next, but the way this phase is operating, people are losing the storylines. They don't know what they should be focusing on, and that equals less investment. Given all these factors, 
I think Phase 4 will not be as big a success as Marvel is hoping for. It's just too scattered. And while I don't believe people are getting tired of superheroes, Marvel is starting to feel a little old hat. Like I said, it will still be financially successful, but the story won't succeed as much as the earlier phases. Maybe I'm underestimating their odds. After all, they're backed by the largest corporation on the planet, and they've proven time and time again how good they are at getting people on board with their ideas. Still, I'm not convinced Phase 4 will be what they're aiming for. Marvel's not going anywhere anytime soon. That much is clear. But with the problems of Phase 4, and the abundance of other superhero content, I think we'll begin to see more people turn away from the franchise. But what do you think? Will Phase 4 be a massive success, or a huge failure? Do you think these issues will start to derail the MCU? Are there other problems with Phase 4 that you think will hurt the MCU in the long run? Let me know in the comments. I know I don't usually make videos like this, but this one was really fun and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing, and thank you for watching.